Hello everybody, Conti here with another video. How to use the film damage tool to create a classical grainy film effect in DaVinci Resolve 16.2. Inside your cut window in DaVinci Resolve, hold Ctrl and press I to insert a media file that you wish to use in this project. Use Command instead of Ctrl if you are a Mac user. Left click on Change if this window appears. Inside your media pool in master, go to select your video clip and go to left click on append. This should move your media clip to your project timeline. With your edit selected with a red outline, go to left click on the color tab at the bottom of your screen. With the nodes panel open and open effects also, underneath library, scroll down until you find film damage. This should appear underneath Resolve FX Texture. You can left click hold your mouse button down and drag this to the node which contains the video clip which you just inserted in your cut window. Let go of the left mouse button once your cursor is over the node so that you are able to apply film damage settings. Or left click and drag this film damage node onto the node's grid. Disconnect the line going from the video node to the output node on the right side here by left clicking on the blue line once and dragging a line from the green box in the top right corner of your video node to the green triangle which appears in the top left corner of your new film damage node. Let go once the triangle has a white outline around it and then connect the green square to the output node. Left click, drag and let go of your left mouse button on this node here. Underneath settings, to disable any film damage settings that have been applied to your video clip, you can left click on the red button which appears to the left of the film damage title itself. So that this changes grey, the settings become unselectable and the original video format is restored. A blur effect can be added with the top setting by increasing the value here or by typing this in manually. I'm going to set mine to 0 0.184. Should you wish to reset any value, you can left click on the curled arrow symbol which appears to the right of the property that you wish to reset. Increasing the value of temp shift intensifies the red shades in your image or video file. Decreasing the value enhances the cyan shades instead. Increasing the value in tint shift intensifies the magenta shades of your media file. Decreasing this variable enhances the green color properties. To make your video black and white, select the node featuring your original video clip, the one with no color correction applied. Go to color wheels and reduce the saturation from 50 to 0. Go back to your film damage node. Note how the higher temp shift gives the image a more sepia look. Should you wish for this effect to be more neutral, you can reduce the temp shift and tint shift numbers to about halfway each. Underneath add vignetting, focal factor creates a dark surrounding of your video content, like so. And geometry factor makes this dark shade appear more opaque if you increase this value. I'm going to select 0.53 for the focal factor and 0.306 for the geometry factor. Tilt amount enables you to shift this circular shape up and down. Increasing the number shifts the focal factor created before upwards. Scrolling back down the other way increases the clearness and visibility of the content below with the dark shade intensifying up in the top. If I try adjusting the tilt angle, nothing appears to change in the video preview. However, if I ensure that the value for my tilt amount is not neutral, by increasing it to 0.673 for example, and now adjusting the tilt angle, this rotates the previously added effect around your canvas. It's rotated clockwise if we go to the right and anti-clockwise if we go the other way. For now I'm going to ensure that both of these are reset to zero. 
To create the grainy effect, we scroll down further in our film damage settings to add dirt. Since I want to maintain the grayscale of my video here, I want to keep the dirt color as black. To change this color shade, double click in the box next to dirt color. Select a shade available in the box in the middle or from the side here. Or on the vertical bar on the right side here. Press OK and the color of your grains will be modified. For now, I'm going to stick with black. For variation of the grains, ensure that changing dirt is ticked. Density basically refers to the weight surrounding the grains which appear on screen. If we increase this to 10, we can see that each grain has more body. If we reduce this, they become less significant on screen. To increase the actual size of the grains, go down to the second option, Dirt Size. What appears on the video preview are the grains almost zooming out towards the DaVinci Resolve editor. A dirt blur effect will make the grains blend in with your video content more if you increase this. A smaller value applied will result in a much sharper looking grain, but one which doesn't blend in well on the video content. Dirt seed basically refers to the random slotting of grains on your video. The higher this value, the more random allocations of grains on your video clip will be applied. But even with a small dirt seed setting, the placement of these grains appears inconsistent anyway. For now, I'm going to stick with dirt density as 4, dirt size 2.960, dirt blur 0.419, and dirt seed as 4. Scrolling down the options further for the film damage settings, the next option we come to is add scratch 1. Note the line which we can see in the left side here of the video preview. This is referred to as scratch number 1. Left click on enable and this line disappears. Again like we did with the dirt colour we can change the colour of the line here by double clicking in the box next to scratch colour and choosing the desired shade that we want the line to be or by typing in the hexadecimal code into the box next to HTML. Click OK when you're done. Should you wish for the line or for the dirt to be similar to a colour shade that already exists on your video clip, you can go to the picker tool next to the colour box and left click once on the colour shade that you wish for this line to be. Should I wish for this line to be similar to the white colour which appears in the middle of the video here, I can left click on this particular subject. The colour selection is updated and the line changes to white. For now I'm going to use black as the line colour. The positioning of this line on the video canvas can be altered using the next property down. Shifting the value of scratch position to a higher number shifts this line further to the right. The smaller the number the further left it will go. The width of the line can also be increased and the weight and significance on the video canvas can also be enhanced using scratch strength. If I increase the width here first of all as an example, note how it is slightly blurry and we can see through to the water content on the video clip here. If I increase the scratch strength, the line itself becomes more opaque and the blur effect can also be applied to the line itself. For now I'm going to stick with scratch position as 0.155, scratch width as 0.143, scratch strength as 0.419 and scratch blur as 0.490. Should you wish for the scratch line to stay still, untick the moving scratch box. I'm going to left click so that this is moving. Note how the line stays towards the left side of the video and does not pass the centre point of the screen. In order to increase the distance in which it moves, you can alter the moving amplitude. Note how when this is increased, the line shifts further across the video clip canvas. But the distance it covers is also randomised. And this occurs with moving random, which is the third option down from moving scratch. If I reduce this to zero, note how there is more consistency in the line movement. To enhance the velocity in which the line moves, you can also increase the scratch's moving speed. 
and to create a skipping effect as well we can add more flickering speeds where the line disappears on certain parts of the video. Should you wish to add further lines you can go down to add scratch 2, 3, 4 and 5 where if we left click on the second tab the same settings as scratch 1 can also be applied and modified. To disable any of these at any time, use the enable box below the relevant scratch number label. Thank you very much for watching, I hope that video was useful to you. If you enjoyed the content and wish to be notified about future uploads on this channel, please like and subscribe. Join me soon for another video, take care.